Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today I'm bringing you a little video on power outages, blackouts, and maybe something else. But here's the thing. They're already warning about a lot of power outages and rolling blackouts this coming year. A lot of different scientists are saying this. A lot of top officials for a lot of big corporations are also saying the same thing. So what are we supposed to do? You know, much of North America may face, uh, you know, electricity shortages starting in 2024 and running through 2028 because the infrastructure just can't handle it. Look at all the electric cars that are out there right now. Now, a problem with electric cars is if you live north of, say, the Mason-Dixon line, uh, they don't like the cold. We've all seen that. Now, how are they going to get around that? As they push more and more of these electric cars, the grid can't handle this. It's a proven fact. You know, we're starting backwards. I'm all for, you know, I mean, trying to do whatever we can to uh, cut emissions or whatever. That's fine and dandy, but we should have started the opposite direction and started with the grid first, but we started at the other end of the spectrum, and now we're probably going to end up paying for it. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to put in the description below uh, some articles and stuff you guys can go in and read for yourself, but this video is prone to making sure that people are aware this coming year, and we need to be prepared. However you want to do it, if you want to have your own generators, if you want to have your solar panels, battery banks, all of the above, whatever it may be, you might want to make sure that you have some way to get through these situations. And let's pray to God that it's not that bad. If there are rolling blackouts, they don't last that long. Or if there is a uh, energy shortage and they cut energy to certain sectors of the country, that they don't last that long. But they typically do that when it is the hottest period outside so it makes a lot of people suffer because they just can't deal with the heat so sit back and enjoy this video and i hope everybody gets a little bit of information out of this and i hope that you all are preparing because i have a feeling folks everybody's screaming the warnings the warning signs are there let's make sure we're listening because we don't want to be caught with our pants down Enjoy the video. And welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in today. Today we're diving into a scenario that sounds like it came straight out of a sci-fi movie. Really. But the difference is the implications are all too real in this day and age. What if the United States faced a total grid failure? Or better yet, was hit by an EMP attack? Stick around as we break down the chilling details of what could happen, how it would affect us, and what could be done to recover from this catastrophic event. So, let's get into it. Imagine, in an instant, the entire electric grid goes down. A silent pulse renders as all electronics useless. It's not just your cell phone, folks, that's dead. It's the entire country's lifeline. First off, we would be plunged into darkness. No lights, no internet, no communications whatsoever. Cars, trains, and even planes would stop working. And the planes that are in the air could, under an EMP, possibly fall out of the sky. The immediate chaos on the streets would be just the beginning of this horrible situation. Imagine this. Within days, food supplies would dwindle. Without the refrigeration, what's left at the stores is going to spoil. Or possibly what's left in your home will spoil if you're not prepared correctly. Water? It's gone. Those taps won't flow without the pumps that the electricity powers. And as for sanitation, well, let's just say it just became a major luxury 
in the time that we are living. Hospitals would be overwhelmed, struggling to care for patients without power. And for those relying on life-saving medical devices, the situation becomes majorly dire really fast. Yes, a lot of hospitals might have generators that might work, but for how long? But it's not just the lack of resources. The fabric of our society gets tested as communication breakdowns lead to a panic and lawlessness. The thin line between order and chaos, it blurs. You don't want to be doing a lot or going places at this point in time. Yet, in the darkness, yes, there is a light. The human spirit to overcome, to rebuild, to be better, restoring power and communication becomes priority number one. It's a huge humanitarian crisis that we're in. And it's going to be a huge humanitarian effort requiring national mobilization like we've never seen before in this country and may never see it again. The road to recovery, long and fraught with challenges, but it also opens up major opportunities for us to rethink our infrastructure to make it more resilient against future threats. This is a time that we have to come together and figure out what doesn't work, what will work, and how to protect a lot of our major infrastructure so we don't go through something like this again in the near future. This scenario, as daunting as it is, reminds us of the importance of preparedness, being ready, having a plan, being part of a community and of resilience in people. It's a call to action for all of us to support efforts to strengthen our nation's defense against such catastrophic events. So what can we do? Start by being informed, prepared, and engaged in your community's emergency planning see what they have going on what is their plan and depending on where you live and what the plan could be you're going to need to have your own backup to cover maybe their lack of whatever it is that they can engage and give to the community in such an emergency together though we can face any challenge, no matter how daunting, how big, or how catastrophic. We can overcome. We can be prepared for our families. I would like to thank you for watching today. If you found this video enlightening, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and your family. Please do. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see all of you on the flip side.